like a lot of people, especially on TikTok, they're all thinking, okay, everybody wants to watch you, but like 90% or more of the content out there on social media is selfish content. It's not content that actually helps people. No, seriously, people are trying to show off, you know, to get views and obviously because you're getting paid for views. But yeah. if you have a skill or if you have any talent, even if you think people won't care, or like maybe they, they want to watch this like, yeah, that's too commonplace. A lot of times yeah. that's the content you want to make. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Blitz Growth. Uh, really excited to have an amazing guest here today. I think you're going to learn a lot. If you haven't already, uh, make sure to subscribe and leave us some comments to let us know if you like this episode and all the different content that you want us to keep producing. But today, our main star is Emily. She has taken a passion for creating in real life online through Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram as distribution channels. We're gonna go into this a little bit later, but yeah, some impressive stuff there. She inspires and teaches others how to paint, craft, and DIY. So very interesting skill sets. And uh, today we're gonna dive into how she's built an engaged following of over 800,000 people. And on top of all of that, plans to turn this attention into a full-time business this year. So Emily, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Of course. So um, yeah, really interesting story. I would love mm -hmm. to dive in and start with kind of how you got started with this in terms of moving from, you know, occupation in person, in real life. Uh, I think you're saying, you know, teaching in nursing homes and those sorts of things. Yeah. And then pivoted this to online and what sort of opportunities that's unlocked. So how did you, like, where did you start and then where are you now? Yeah. So, so what I started, what most people don't know is I have uh, like my following online, but what I do in person every day is I'm a traveling art studio. So I have a little wagon that I load up all my art and painting and I visit retirement homes, nursing homes. Um, I started working um, just one-on-one -on -one painting with memory care residents, just to give you an idea. So... I, I was doing that full time before the pandemic hit, but think about the pandemic, everything shut down, especially the nursing homes. So all of a sudden within a week, everybody canceled on me. It's like, oh, what do I do now, you know? I mean, honestly, it was perfect timing because my husband and I had just bought a fixer upper house that it was a total wreck. Like we ended up living in the basement for six months uh, before we made it livable. So during that time, yeah, I had some time off. We renovated the whole house. And I kid you not, as soon as we got done with the renovations, I started getting some calls back. But at that time, I had been like, it's just, I realized I was at my limit as just being one person in a business, right? Uh -huh. um, and being able to teach a small group, I knew that social media was a way to reach a much larger group of people, right? I was like, how can you clone yourself basically to be in more than one place at one time? So... I started listening to podcasts like yours saying, okay, how could I start to make this transition? Because I knew how busy I was before the pandemic is not, like, I didn't want to be running myself ragged anymore because I mean, uh -huh. I was making decent pay, but not enough to like justify the amount of work that goes into getting all the supplies together, teaching a class, right? So yep. I started listening to podcasts about how to use social media to grow your business, all right, online. And, um, at the time, I just, I was still teaching some, like people brought me back in once things started opening up and I was teaching a few classes that were painting, some of that were crafting. I just started filming um, what I was doing every day. Like basically what I was teaching in the class, I would make a short reel on it or a short video about that, right? And just started uh -huh. putting it on um, Facebook. Um, something must have triggered the algorithm though on Facebook because I don't know if you've heard, like they have like bonuses now and things like that where they're paying kind of I thought it was fake but I just happened to be listening to a podcast that was talking about that and I kid you not when I was listening to the podcast I opened my phone up and I had a notification inviting me into the program I was like no wow. you, like they're gonna pay me to to post these so I I started posting them on my personal was this page. for like, real okay for real yeah like the, yeah. literally yep. yeah that's what I started and I started getting paid like right away i started getting some followers this was on my personal page right wow uh wasn't yeah. even on my business page now my business page um and can i go into the story about how i went by yeah, for the wrong reasons okay yeah, yeah. so so that's how i started getting paid um online to start all right uh -huh. and so i started making these videos and like i kind of knew how social media worked and how much you could get traction because when I was in college, I 
started saving Starburst wrapper. Some people might remember this was like five years ago when it did go viral, but when it did, it scared the crap out of me. It really did because it went mega viral. I made a dress out of Starburst candy wrappers. Like if you Google my okay. name, Starburst candy wrappers, you will see me all over the internet. Um, this was right when I was starting my painting business though. So it had nothing to do with what I was Perfect. actually doing for my business, right? So okay. it caused like an identity crisis in what I was doing in my business. Like, am I an upcycler or like, do I make dresses now for a living or am I still the teaching artist that I was like trained to do, like what my business was? So I started a Facebook page based on that and I got like a couple thousand people. It wasn't a lot, but like I still <laughs> get people sending me pictures of me in that dress in the front of their newspaper in different languages, randomly, different countries. So just to give you that idea. Um, so That's bizarre. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So thankfully, that it was really more just like a five minutes of fame thing, though. Um, uh -huh. So it wasn't like a sustainable business. But I had this random Facebook page, right, that um, was just sitting there and it was a business page. So I was like, well, uh -huh. why don't I start posting some of the stuff I am over there? So I did. And same thing with TikTok. But I started off with what I knew worked as far as getting people's attention. I started doing TikToks uh -huh. and you know, Facebook reels about like the dress and some of the other cool upcycling art that I did. That was more. So of a you hobby. did leverage, yeah. So I you did, did leverage that I, kind of I like did. moment of yes. fame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I did just to get everybody's attention. You know, uh -huh. hey, I'm over here, right? No, it's smart. Um, That's really good. Yeah, and then actually, it initially worked on TikTok, like. One of, one of them went in the algorithm, I guess, and I got like 100,000 followers like within a week. So I was like, okay, this is something to work with. Um, uh -huh. But again, not sustainable because the dress alone um, took five years to make and I can't be doing five-year <laughs> projects like every day to post on TikTok, right? So it's not a sustainable business model at all, but it got people's attention. That's what I'm most well-known for. Um, but okay. thankfully, I'm, I'm getting more well-known for, for what I actually do um, to make money. Yeah. Um, no, that's so, great. And at least yeah. you, at least you understood that. Hey, this was content that gets eyeballs. Yes. And then yeah. pivoted towards content that actually adds value. Um, right. Because I think there's yeah. a big difference between what gets attention and what gets views uh -huh. versus what actually adds value, and you can turn into a business. Right. Um, so what most people, like a lot of people, especially on TikTok, they're all thinking, okay, everybody wants to watch you. But I, I think I heard um, a podcast talking about how like 90% or more of the content out there on social media is selfish content. It's not content that actually helps people. No, seriously, people are trying to show off, you know, to get views and obviously because you're getting paid for views. But yeah. if you have a skill or if you have any talent, even if you think people won't care, or like maybe they, they want to watch this, like, yeah, that's too commonplace. A lot of times yeah. that's the content you want to make because it's helping yeah. people, it's selfless content, it's um, service-based, right? Mm. Um, so I was just sharing, back to the story about how, how it grew into what I'm doing now, um, I started filming like the crafting and some of the painting tutorials. I wasn't doing voiceovers yet, I was just doing short snippets because I didn't think people uh -huh. had the attention spans to like hear a whole voiceover, right? Yeah. But I did want, I think it was one of a beach, to start and somebody commented, this is really cool. I want to know how to do this. Can you do a voiceover tutorial? I'm like, okay, it was a little over two minutes long, I think, right? Mm, so okay. I did it. Never done a voiceover, but I did it. Did the whole thing, like um, explained how I did it, posted it, and it got like a couple hundred thousand, it's over like a couple million now, I think, but people were actually watching it. So mm. it was just like, really, this might work? So. I was like, okay, I have a lot of paintings that I do in my classes on a regular basis. Why don't I film those and do short, like, spark notes versions, you know? Like, mm. because a lot of art teaching artists online, especially, like, on YouTube, they're, like, an hour long. You know, people aren't going to watch that, especially on TikTok and, and Facebook Reels and stuff. So I, I did that, and I started pushing the limit a little bit, making five minutes. I don't know how I have the ability to make ten-minute TikToks. I don't know how that happened, because I know when I started, I only had a minute. Um, but I've yeah, been pushing the limit. It, yeah. yeah, I keep increasing the time limit and people are watching. Like I've had people comment saying, it's like, I forgot I was on TikTok or I watched the whole thing. And how are you posting this this long? Right. So, so I know it's at least engaging content, but <laughs> thank goodness. Uh, it surprised me that that's what I do on a daily basis. I didn't think anybody would care, especially because the paintings I'm doing, memory care residents can do them. 
Or like I'll get yeah, like okay. I'll get I'll get a commenter that's a hater, and they're like, "That's awful." A four year old could do it. It's like exactly, that's exactly. The point, yeah, Be- that's the whole <laughs> point. Because like somebody messaged me the other day and said, "Thank you so much for what you're doing. You're really the on- only artist I could find out there that's actually teaching true beginner content. Most of the people who say they're teaching beginners are doing something that you already have to ha- know how to hold a paintbrush. You know yeah, how the paint okay. works. So I'm starting yeah. at the very very beginner basics so i think that's sure. why it's working but thankfully it was like the lowest hanging fruit to to grab a hold of and be like okay i can do multiple videos of this because it's what i do every day and what i'm most used to doing does that make sense yeah and i think a few yeah. few takeaways from that for all the listeners is one are you creating okay. selfish or selfless content okay. create more selfless content that adds value i think as okay. you're saying that content seems to get people engaged people seem to watch it and it breaks up their their feed because if they're just seeing people bragging all day every day or uh, selfish content and then all of a sudden they see selfless content where they're actually learning something or getting some okay. value, then, you know, you might stand out. Uh, I think the other thing that you did really well is like listening to your comments and uh-huh. uh, taking that feedback and adjusting. Uh, uh-huh. You know, I think the biggest thing is people think that everything needs to be perfect for, but- you know, their cameras, their setup and all that sort of stuff. But you kind of just listened to what they wanted and just gave it to them and then that's right. sort of how you got started it sounds um yeah and then yeah, yeah you don't super need interesting fancy equipment you don't need fancy mm. equipment i'm just doing it on my phone i'm trying to get better but i'm just doing it on the fly so, sorry go ahead i think people don't mind the phone now the phones are so yeah. good it's uh it's yeah, just exactly. as good as a, a high-tech camera right uh, okay that's awesome and then uh so you kind of had a accidental viral moment which you then kind of turned into a little bit of traction and then you pivoted towards something that was a little more up your stream and a little bit more uh, kind of focused on your skill set. Right. I would say you were obviously do- already doing this. Was there uh-huh. anything that made you think, hey, like I, obviously the pandemic helped, but was there anything or anybody that said, hey, you should really do this online? Or was it just that you kind of like uh, had that one viral moment? They're like, hey, I'm going to start doing this. Like what was that uh- tipping point where you're like, actually, I'm going to start posting these online? Well, I... Let's just put it this way. I knew that that's what I needed to be doing from the beginning. I I went to college for um, entrepreneurial leadership. So I took social social media marketing in college, right? So I knew what I needed to be doing, but I knew that I was too busy before the pandemic that I hardly had time. So I started to make time about a year ago to start filming. And YouTube was actually where I wanted to grow. I didn't expect TikTok or Facebook. Uh, so yeah. I'm still working on um, YouTube, but um, the learning curve with um, the tech and everything, TikTok and Facebook, uh-huh. just using the phone made it a lot easier to get in there. Um, because yeah. I had accidentally gone viral, I knew the um, the power of social media. I just didn't know what kind of content I needed to be doing and what format. I think the pandemic helped because it got uh-huh. everybody used to learning online. You know, when everybody yep. was stuck at home, they were um, trying to learn things online. So everybody's used to learning through computers now. Does that make well, sense? Well, art is also such a good one to learn at home. If you're like, hey, I'm oh, going to yeah. pick a new thing. Like, you know, it's relaxing. It's, right. there's, you know, a never-ending skill level that you can achieve. It's kind of like golf. You can never perfect it. Um, right. Yeah, so talent there's is always a challenge. Interest. Talent uh-huh. is pursued interest. So as long yeah. as you pursue it, and there's so many teachers out there, I just happen to be one of them. Yeah, no, you're you're doing a great job. And then, you know, we don't come across that many people that have been able to kind of keep their Facebook page working really, really well. But you have so much engagement and it's growing like every day. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm trying. (laughs) Um, again, it's coming down to the point again where it's just one person, (laughs) you know. Uh And I have I get like at least ten or twenty requests every day. So I am planning to wow. start something like a Patreon or something where like maybe if they really want to see the requests up there, they can pay for it because what people don't realize is the paintings themselves can take at least twelve hours to do. Like it's not like a TikTok yeah. 30 second, 60 second TikTok that I can batch process, you know. I'm uh-huh. trying to think realistically, like there's tons of people asking me for content, but I'm kind of looking at the comments seeing what is every what is the general consensus of what everybody's asking for and doing that like put, pushing that ahead yeah. on the list um you yeah. know what I so mean? do you put like polls up do you like ask yeah. like in a post you put up a poll like hey these are yeah. the five i've had requests which ones does everybody want and so you find that that works really well 
Yeah, well, um, just engagement posts in general to keep the community really like while I'm setting up the different revenue streams to be online, I'm trying to build an engaged community because it, it mm -hmm. is a community and I'm getting to one. know some yep. people. Yeah, exactly. That's just the step I have. It's just growing so fast. It's like if I hadn't gone viral for the Starburst dress, it probably freaked me out a little bit, but I'm used to it now. <laughs> um, but uh, like a couple months ago, I think it was in February, I was getting a lot of requests for farm animals. So I said, oh, okay, what's your favorite farm animal? Animal, And out of all of that, I um, tallied up the top three. And I said, uh -huh. here's the top three. This one I'm going to do first. And then a couple weeks later, I did. it was like a rooster was number one. And so I did a painting of a rooster and everybody loved it. Now, it was a lot longer. I did it more detailed than a lot of the other paintings I do. Um, but yeah, that okay. way I know they were waiting for it. And like some people, when it was taking me a little bit longer than I thought, they're like, did you do it yet? And so I had a lot of people waiting for it, which was really That's cool. That's great. That anticipation probably yeah. gets people coming back, checking. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, and posting engaging. updates and all that. And, and it's it's yeah. been helping. So Yeah. So in terms of your content, you kind of break it down. You have, it sounds like you've got like feedback or comments on mm -hmm. what you should do. And then you've got like update posts and then you've got mm -hmm. the reveal. Do you kind of have any strategy around that or that's just naturally what you thought, hey, this is what I need to do? Yeah, well, I'm I'm trying to make like a content calendar in a way uh -huh. so, so I can plan ahead. So my strategy is I'm trying to do at least one painting a week or every, depending how um, detailed it is, um, at least one or two like things where I'm engaging, like trying to have them share pictures of what they've done, um, reels that are sharing tips and tricks and then mm -hmm. like the occasional craft i'm trying to plan it out and i'm still figuring out a rhythm but figure out what time of day is best to post um yeah like on tiktok i noticed like i tried to start posting more on facebook and that worked i tried posting the same types of things on tiktok and they were used to something else and i started to lose a couple followers because i think i posted too much so i actually mm. which is weird they say to post every day on tiktok i've noticed it's better for me to only hit post like Two or three times a week, max. Oh, or nice. That's yeah, good for or you. Too much. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> I'm kind of taking those hints in my analytics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like okay. What so you are game. looking at all your analytics. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, you're supposed to study them from what I've heard. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out like what what posts, what kind of posts are working the best. Like I've noticed like the short mm -hmm. videos or videos that share easy tips and tricks are the mm -hmm. best. And even I'm I've been taking clips out of my longer tutorials that have like a snippet of teaching them a new concept breaking yep. that down like you know on youtube you can do shorts from that so the same concept um trying to do that yeah. um and i've also been trying to go through the comments and pick out questions that i'm getting a lot of and then doing videos mm -hmm. that answer the questions you know it's just yeah. how many times per week is what yeah. i'm trying to and figure out at this point yeah i think that's a great learning for everybody as well just mm -hmm. kind of like identifying one what your best content is and then mm -hmm. do you kind of use like comments reach shares what do you use as your main kind of like hey that was a uh, successful post what sort of metrics uh, do you think, look at i think it's overall actually because even if you get views views aren't as important necessarily as comments and reactions things like that because somebody could just view it and be done in three seconds that's not what you're looking for like i'm looking at the videos that had people watching for over a minute over two minutes or okay. did they watch the whole thing did they like it did they share it so that's that's okay. one way you can know if you did well versus if you had a million views but only a hundred hundred thousand maybe um watched it all the way through. I mean it's still a good post, mm -hmm. but you're you're hoping for higher. Got it. Does okay. that make sense? And so so you're mostly looking at like completion rates or amount of right. the percentage that um completed it or what percentage most people got to in the video. And those ones you're like, okay, these are my good posts. Right. Um also criticism. This is going to sound mm. weird, but something I've noticed is my posts that do really, really well are the uh -huh. ones that start to get critics or negative comments. If, <laughs> if that That is an indicator to me that I'm reaching enough people. That is nice. actually something I learned. So, You're hitting so both like, sides just, of the argument. Right. Yeah, because, you know, your friends and, and people close to you, they're not going to say anything nasty. But if you're starting to get those, that means you're reaching a larger audience and you're naturally yeah. going to get that. So, yeah. That's yeah. another great learning, like lean into the, it's like, it should be a discussion, not necessarily an argument, but mm -hmm. lean into the the haters or the people who are kind of combating it because the social platforms don't know the difference between 
mm-hmm. a you know a comment that says hey great work or a comment that says hey I don't like this exactly. this is why like um, but the conversation is the important part right if, as long as they're engaging it can be good or bad engagement and I think it's it's so funny like I have one video that's of sunflowers right. And in the video, uh-huh. I did, like I did. The, they are not my best work, obviously. Like again, I'm not showing off. I'm showing beginner stuff. But I just I did the sunflowers nice, and then I did the the leaves willy nilly. Like they were like uh-huh. so I, even in the video, I'm like these aren't really what sunflower leaves look like. I just did it, and oh my goodness, the amount of people that got offended at the fact that wow. I did not paint the technical sunflower leaf. I get dozens of comments of just saying that's not a sunflower leaf every day. But because Fantastic. they can't not. Yeah, but because they can't not share their opinion, you know, yeah. because they, people have to be right or they have to correct yep. you, it's pushing that video. It has like a couple million views now um, organically <laughs> because wow. they can't not cut. So that makes me want to in my videos too sometimes just put something a little bit off. Like don't connect the dot somewhere and then those people will come out and push it through the algorithm. <laughs> so I yeah. Like, not on purpose. Anyway. Yeah, no, because I, I do agree with you. The um... Yeah. Uh, the the haters are just as important as the followers or yeah. the fans. So, yeah. Uh, the com- the best posts uh, out of everybody we talk to, mm-hmm. usually the people who have had viral posts or something go really really well is when there's been controversy in the content or there's been right. one side versus the other, and that right. seems to be the fuel that drives the 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 impressions because right. the algorithms just think, hey, tons of people are commenting and watching this video, it must be good. Let's keep pushing it to more and more people. Exactly. Um, I almost want to comment and respond to them. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> just not say anything else. But... What's oh, What's your approach for managing your comment section? Do you go in there and reply to everything? Do oh, you man. do your video replies? What What do you usually do when um when you've kind of got comments and engagement on your posts? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of them, <laughs> so I've I've had to kind of manage my time a little bit. Um. One thing I did do is I started setting aside a time every day, even if it's just for 30 minutes, an hour, and trying to respond to as many people as I can. Because I just, uh-huh. I've come to realize that I'm not going to be able to get ever- to everybody. And there's even still some uh-huh. where I thought I responded to everybody and they keep commenting and I'll go back and be like, oh, I missed them or they're sharing pictures. I, I love, um I have people almost every day sending me pictures of their painting and saying Mm -hmm. thank you and I try to respond to those as much as I can but I'm still finding them from like weeks ago so I try to just get to as many as I can without um going overboard because I could be doing that all day um Mm -hmm. and another thing that helped me too is I deleted all the social media off of my personal phone and I got a work phone that was just for social media it's a good idea that was like I film on that one everything and then when I'm done I literally leave it in another room and then I'm not still working yeah that makes sense yeah i think like this is a another topic completely but we have Mm -hmm. uh, we have interviewed a few people in the the mental health space and the importance of like separating work and life now is just kind of on a whole new level um so that's a great tip uh for all content creators really because if it's in your pocket uh you know you could sit there replying to comments all day or be stressing about that's what i was doing or whatever (laughs) maybe yeah yeah before I did that. No, that's so. a great tip. Um, really good tip there. Um, okay. And the next question is, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of art channels or DIY channels, uh, mm-hmm. those sorts of things out there in terms of accounts or channels. Why do you think oh, yeah. people love yours? Why, what, what do you think you do differently? What's your, what's your edge, I suppose? Yeah. Well, I am, again, in tune to beginner artists because of working with the residents in the home. At kids, I do work with a lot of kids too. Okay. Um, so I know what true beginner content is. Does that make sense? Got it. Okay. So, so I know. So you really niche down. Yeah, exactly. It's a whole untapped market. I'm finding mm-hmm. out because most of the artists that are teaching, like they're either showing off or they are teaching beginner, but it's still pretty advanced. It's not something I could teach to um, one of my groups in the homes or to a group of six year olds. So, yeah. and that's, I don't mean that in any demeaning way at all. Yeah. And it's, it's not even about the painting, something else. Okay. It's not about the painting and the end result so much as the feelings of self-accomplishment and self-worth that come out of them 
realizing, oh, hey, I can do this, and they do it, and they're so proud of themselves, all right? It may mm-hmm. not look like Van Gogh, but it's something they did, all right? Yeah. And I always say art is an expression, all right? It's really, okay, you create it. It's something you create. If you're happy with it, that makes you an artist. It, yeah. That's, it really yeah, it's not good or bad. So that's that's kind of the message I'm trying to get across. I don't know if that's too different from what everybody else is, but the fact that I'm so niched down and the fact uh-huh. that my I'm doing the tutorials that like a lot of artists are doing, but I'm doing them in such a spark notes version where it's it's so yep. short. Even if it is ten yep. minutes. I'm gonna start pushing the limit. Like because I do want to start doing YouTube. That's that's where like Patreon yeah. and subscribed content I think is gonna come in where they'll get the spark notes version and then I'll have more in depth tutorials for someone who wants to go further. Yeah, I think uh pay, paid memberships or paid content mm-hmm. definitely seems to be one of the the easier ways for content creators to start mm-hmm. monetizing. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, you, you put so much time and effort into creating this content and currently it's all free. Um, I know. <laughs> and so, you know, it does it does get to a tipping point where it's like, okay, if, if I want to keep doing this, then, you know, I've got to find some ways to monetize it. Uh, and right. in terms of your, your follower base, I know you said that you were kind of catering to the younger younger demographic. Do you sort of mm-hmm. like know exactly who your perfect follower is and then make content for them? Or do you sort of just you know, make content based off what people are saying, that sort of thing? Or do you kind of be a little bit more strategic about it? Be like, hey, this content is maybe too old for my audience or maybe this is not a good fit for my audience. Do you kind of think about that? Or oh, yeah. is it just sort um, of... Well, okay, so like on TikTok, I was shocked that I was having a lot of moms reach out to me and asking, hey, do you have a kid's YouTube channel? Like my my six-year-old or my eight-year-old loves your content. He watches it with me on TikTok. I didn't realize I was reaching so young of a yeah. um a, a viewer, Scary. you know, through TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I shouldn't be like um, seeing them on there, but it's because the parents were. And yeah. like, I, and on Facebook too, like usually there's the more older generation there, which is what I'm used to working with. So I have a lot of those. But we looked at my analytics and it's like even all across the mm. board, young, like me. So I don't think it necessarily uh, matters about the age so much as in the stage of, okay, do they know how to paint? Are they wanting to learn that kind of thing? Um, my content is family friendly, so you're not going to see anything mm-hmm. um, that wouldn't be appropriate for a six-year-old, Okay. But, but, you know, the older generation and even my generation are still going to enjoy it. So I, yeah. I'm trying not to get too... More of the relaxing aspect. Too, right. <laughs> oh, it's like a Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not there, but... Because <laughs> even his Soon. stuff, I mean, it was easy, but still, like, you look at it, it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't yeah. think it was easy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay, that's great. And then... Um, uh, just a few more questions before we wrap up. Uh, so for the uh, one tip, actually, for the people creating stuff for kids, there is an option on YouTube to tick the box to say this is made for kids. And yes. it actually goes to the kids' YouTube. Yeah. Um, so that was a that that's was a little tip I'm... we learned from another uh, Yeah, another that's guest, actually, but... like, I may start doing that or I don't know if I'm going to start a whole separate YouTube kids channel because I know marketing yeah. to kids is kind of like a no-no too. So it's like, how do you do that even though you know there's a market for it? <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm going to yeah. do something like that too, hopefully. Nice. Well, yeah, keep yeah. us updated on how that rollout goes. Um, yeah. The other, one of the final questions I have here, uh, so you've had kind of very interesting sort of starting point you've really captured that opportunity you're turning it into something amazing mm-hmm. and kind of like a full-time business and everything is there anything that you would do differently or any mistakes you made along the way that you'd be like oh if i'd only known um anything to share with the listeners here to maybe save them some heartache uh, as they go through the uh, uh, process <laughs> themselves um um well i guess just again with that beginning thing if i had only known sooner that people would actually care about what i'm doing every day instead of Mm. trying to impress people because if you always think on social media that oh like i want them to think this is awesome so they'll share it don't try Mm -hmm. to impress people just be yourself show what you do every day and people will be able to relate to that and they'll enjoy that so much more and if I had yeah. known that sooner, I'd probably be so much further along, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think that's a great learning as well. Um, 
you know, don't create with value. Don't create exactly. for the vanity metrics. Right. Um, exactly. Because we do see a lot of people who get obsessed with like, you know, number of comments, number of likes they get on a post and really you just need to take one step back and not even look at the metrics yet. Just think about, Hey, what is some value that I can provide? I think the, the thing that you said about having the selfless or the selfish content, I think that's mm-hmm. a great, great yeah. analogy or a great uh, thought process to go through every time you're about to hit publish. Exactly. Um, because yeah. that's, if I had uh, known that, <laughs> if I had known uh, that, I would have been in the right direction sooner. But oh, well, well, I think you're doing pretty well. And <laughs> Emily, you. let us know uh, where we can find out more about you, what projects you're working on, uh, or any anything that you want to leave the guests with today. Yeah, well, you can find me and on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok um, at Emily Sealhammer Art. That's where mine is right now. I'm probably the most active on uh, Facebook and TikTok, um, growing Instagram and YouTube slowly. Um, I'm, again, working on getting something like a Patreon or a subscription service so I can do longer content. But for now, yeah. most of my tips and tricks and everything, I'm just going to be putting out there for free. So come and join the community if you want to <laughs> come hang out with nice. us and paint and create. So <laughs> Great. And we're going to yep. put all those links in the show notes and everything so you guys can easily find those. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate you coming on the show, Emily. Sure, uh, tons you. of learnings and congrats on everything. I 100% agree with you. Create the community first and then okay. the rest will be easy, uh, which you're doing a great job at. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, thanks. Hey, guys, we put a bunch of effort into making great content for this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, hit like, and tell a few friends about it.